Good day everyone, this is Jason Santos and for today we will continue discussing business math on its chapter 2 part. Take note that all of the things that will be discussed here will be derived from the business mathematic quarter 1 week 3 module number 3. Uh, all of the information on this module will be placed down below as well as other resources used for this discussion. First off, we have to understand what a proportion means. A proportion is a statement wherein two ratios are equal. It can be written in two ways. Uh, it can be through fractions, wherein A over B is equals to C over D, or using a colon, A is uh, to B equals to C is to D. Please take note that we can use any letters we want and all of the letters we have used now are just examples we can use x y uh, w u etc it depends on whatever it is that will be used on the succeeding exam understand proportions further let's have a few examples uh, a family of four can consume one kilo of rice daily and then a family of five will consume three kilos of rice daily. Let's uh, inspect this statement. Take note that when the family has started to increase its headcount, the number of kilos of rice being consumed daily also increased. You can also look at the second statement wherein Mark goes to a store to buy a face shield which costs 40 pesos. And then he goes back after two days to buy two face shields, which now costs 80 pesos. Now let's try to translate that in a tabular form. One face shield would cost 40 pesos. Two face shields would cost 80 pesos. Three face shields would cost 120 pesos. And four face shields would cost 160 pesos. So what we're trying to show here is that the more quantities we buy, the more we would have to spend. This example helps us to understand that in proportions, um, there is a relationship. And the relationship would vary depending on the type of proportion we are talking about. For our first example, the term direct proportion means that two or more quantities increase or decrease in the same ratio. In our example, a car can use 3 liters of gasoline and it would cover 60 kilometers. It can use 6 liters and it would cover 120 kilometers. And if it would use 9 liters, it can cover a distance of 180 kilometers. Now if we would put that in a tabular presentation, here's what we will be seeing. Take note that the gasoline um, is in the form of liters and then distance is in kilometers. Now, since the, the gasoline is increasing in amount, it also means that the distance that we can cover would also increase. Thus, the term direct proportion is perfectly applicable. So direct proportions are situations where A increases as B increases. Chemical mixing is a good example of a direct proportion as the overall batch size increases or decreases each ingredient. It will also increase or decrease proportionately. These types of problems are solved using equivalent. Now for our second example of direct proportion, let's talk of some chemicals. Mix two parts of nitrogen to five parts of calcium. If I want to make a single batch, I would mix 2 pounds of nitrogen with 5 pounds of calcium. The total mix would equal 7 pounds. Regardless of the total amount required, nitrogen would make up 2 sevenths of the mix and calcium would be 5 sevenths. If I want 10 pounds of mix, how much nitrogen do I need? So here is an example of a solution already provided to this problem. We can see that the nitrogen is 2 sevenths while calcium is 5 sevenths. In this method, we will be using a cross multiplication. So we can see that uh, the first fraction is 2 over 7, 
while the second one is n over 10. The reason it is n because we are trying to find out the total number of nitrogen that is needed in a batch or mix of 10. So we multiply 2 by 10 and then we multiply 7 by n. So 2 times 10 is equals to 20 and then 7 by n is um, going to be just n. I'll show you in the next example how did that happen. So we will cancel that. 20 divided by 7 is 2.86. Now in solving ratio and proportion, we can use um, cross multiplication or the inner and outer method. When I say inner and outer, we would write it in such way. 2 is to 7 equals to n is to 10. We would have to multiply the inner parts as well as the outer parts. So here, how we would write it is that 7 is multiplied to n while 2 is multiplied to 10. What happens next is we write this down in this format. It is 20 because we multiplied 2 by 10. And then on the right side, we would write 7 and n because we multiplied 7 by n. Now why did we write 7 as both denominators of the fractions? It is because we would like it to be cancelled or we wanted to put in a number that would cancel the rightmost fraction. Most of the time, whatever number is written beside the number you are trying to find out, which n for this case, would be the denominators for both fractions. Thus, you have 20 over 7 and 7n over 7. What happens next is that we cancel uh, sevens on the right fraction. The goal in doing this is to make sure that n is left alone and we cancel the numbers presented. Finally, when we divide 20 by 7, we get 2.86. On the right side, we're left but with nothing but n. So that is our of proportion is what we call indirect proportion. It occurs where A decreases as B increases. So take note, for direct proportion, when one uh, variable increases, the other increases, vice versa. But for this one, when the uh, variable increases, the other variable decreases, vice versa. Gear ratios are a typical example. The more teeth on a gear, the fewer revolutions it will make. Another example is speed of travel compared to time of travel. The faster I drive, the less time it will take me to get to my destination. Indirect proportion are solved using multiplications. It's an example we can use for indirect proportion. Gear ratios, two gears mesh, and how many revolutions will gear A make if gear B makes 5 revolutions. In the picture given, gear A has 8 teeth while gear B has 18 teeth. So from our given, we have already established that there's 8 teeth for gear A, there's 18 teeth for gear B, and that gear B can make 5 revolutions. What we are just trying to find out now is that how many revolutions will gear A make? So when we write this down, we have a simple guide that we can follow. For gear A, the teeth is multiplied by A revolutions. And then B teeth, uh, gear B teeth is multiplied by B's revolutions. So when we put in the numbers, A teeth, multiplied by A revolution because we are still trying to find out how many revolutions will it take for gear A and then 18 teeth for gear B multiplied by 5 revolutions so 
already given. So, here, please take note that when we wrote down um, 8 times A over 8, 8 is already cancelled. While on the other side, 18 times 5 revolution over 8. The denominator is also 8 as what we have discussed earlier. We have to put in the denominator in order for the other part of the fraction to be cancelled. So A revolutions is equal to 18 times 5 revolution over 8. Thus, the answer is 11.22. Answer the same problem using the inner and outer method or approach. So here, we wrote all of the revolutions given on the left side, 5 is to n, and it is equals to gears, 8 is equals to 18. So 5 multiplied by 18 and n is multiplied by 8. Here's what's going to happen next. When you multiply 5 by 18, you get 90. And on the other side, you have 8 by n because you have multiplied n by 8. And then we would write down 8 as the denominators for both fractions in order for us to later on cancel the right side. So we will be canceling 8, which leaves us with n, and then 90 by 8 on the left side. Our answer is still the same, 11.25 is equal to. Our last example or type of proportion is what we call a partitive proportion. Partitive proportion is used to divide a whole number or a whole amount into parts proportional to the given. It means you must know how to identify the parts of a whole based on the given ratio of these parts. Now for partitive proportions, this is an example of proportion that is easily solved without the aid of cross multiplications or inner and outer approach. However, you can still use the same uh, approaches in solving it, but it will be easier as you need you just need to determine what is the entire um, the whole amount and then the proportions that would divide it. So for our example, let's say there are four children who decided to celebrate their parents' anniversary by eating out in an expensive restaurant. They decided to divide the expenses into a ratio of 2 is to 3, 3 is to 4, and 4 is to 5. How much each of the children pays if the entire cost is 7,406 pesos? Um, just to further elaborate the problem, try to imagine that there's a certain family with four siblings and then these four siblings have different capabilities or different salaries. One can only afford two parts, one can only afford three parts, the other can only afford four parts, and then the last one who earns more salary than the rest of the siblings can pay for five parts. So all we have to do here is just add the parts of the entire whole. After summing all the parts of an entire whole, we now come to the conclusion that the parts are 14. So we can write this down with the same method we have learned earlier, cross multiplication, or also inner and outer approach. What we will have is 14n, over 14 equals to 7,406 over 14. And then 14 will be cancelled which leaves us with n is equals to 7,406 over 14. Now if we would divide that, we will come up to the answer of 529 pesos. What does this mean? Each part is equivalent 529 pesos let's uh, think of it this way uh, a bucket meal may cost 529 in the given that is why each brother is uh, given a proportion of the entire uh, amount that they would have to pay the 
first brother would have to pay uh, two bucket meals. The second one would have to pay for three. The third one would have to pay for four. And then the last brother would have to pay for five buckets. We have established that each part costs 529 pesos. This is going to be the total amount that they would have to pay individually. First child or brother will pay 1058 pesos. The second child or brother will pay 1587 pesos. The third child would pay 2116 pesos. And then finally, the last brother would pay for five parts or 2645 pesos. If we would add all of these up, we will be arriving at the same amount which is 7,406 pesos. So for your activity, you can try answering and solving for the following. Answers will be given on the next meeting or you can just send me a message so I could provide you the answers. Wraps up our third discussion for business math and I hope you all learned something today. Uh, you can follow me uh, on all of the platforms written here and please do like and subscribe to my channel hit that notification button so you won't miss on anything that i am uploading thank you so much and to god be all the glory till our next episode